Oh, Keanu, your character's kind of a kleptomaniac in the film. Yes, I steal a camera and some chocolate. You did. <laughs> <laughs> what did, when you were reading it and, and playing it, what did that bring to the character? What did that do to the film, in your opinion? Stealing the camera for John was the only thing he could do in order to, to have that camera. We see him walk up to a camera store earlier, and, and then we see him retrieve a broken television set. Um, and in that moment, he's just kind of explained to this other character how he's felt trapped in his life. He's dealing with locks and directions. And in this moment of watching this group of people do this improvisational dance in this part of you know, in the lower side of New York, um, he sees an opportunity for something that he's interested in. And it's one of the times that he steps out of himself and he takes it. And I think for the candy bar, uh, he's hungry and he wants some chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and he's depressed. <laughs> and it's, a, it's, 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 it's one of those things that you know, I, mean, I don't know, he, he, he likes, to, there's a part of him that likes to steal, and there's a pleasure in it. I think, uh, um... The burst. Huh? The burst. The burst of that? Yeah. yeah. There's a little bit of a nuance to that character mm -hmm. for that. So I mean, we had some fun about, like, how are you going to steal that candy bar? Yeah. And uh, Mark was like, I'm going to introduce you to this magician. <laughs> and then he yeah. her, and I was like, Mark, it's very I, exciting. I know how to steal a kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, you know, I really enjoy when you jumped over the turnstile. Too. Oh, that's right. That's, that's another the kind of theft. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Just always jumped like, over the... He's just trying to do stuff. He's a petty criminal. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same question to you, Mark. What, were you thinking, what, what was the thinking behind that when you were writing the character? Um, you know, I was just thinking about how... how how do you change your life? You know, and it's just a, like oftentimes I think that you have to you have to make a bold move and you have to do something that people don't necessarily uh, congratulate you for um, to to give yourself what you need to move forward. And you know, I mean, I, kind of a you know, I guess you speak metaphorically. It's just it's 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 kind of the way things have gone. We haven't you know we we've sort of entered into sort of a time where where that kind of thing is sort of seen as the only way that you can actually get ahead. And, and you know, for better or for worse, it's entered into our sense of right and wrong. No concerns about us seeing him do that and thinking, well, he's the bad guy because he's a thief? No, you know. It is. It's a complication. I mean, he yeah. also pays for the coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, you know, it's all, there's a, there's a, there's a management of of wrongdoing. I mean, because, you know, in the whole movie, he's doing some, you know, John is also enabling, you know, there's a nurturing, it's nurturing versus enabling. There's a, every single scene in the movie has has a yes and a no. So it's, it's you know, you think about it in the context of what he is, his job is, stealing a candy bar, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a consistency of character that rolls through the whole movie. So. Being a character of such few words, you're forced to, you know, rely on what you're emoting, what was the biggest challenge with that? Because, I mean, you have to emote the various layers. Yeah, it was, uh, to me, that was a wonderful opportunity, you know. Um, I would say the, the scariest scene was the scene where uh, John and Violet come together. Because playing John, I had no idea how that could actually happen. I had no idea. Like, how, how could this person who felt so vulnerable and insular and who wanted to reach out and had so many questions and, how, and also how could he help someone really, you know, feeling, you know, just well, how is that going to happen? And a lot of film rolled. <laughs> to like, how did these two people hug each other? It's one of the longest hug scenes on <laughs> maybe ever uh, on film uh, it's <laughs> long it's like altogether it's got to be over five minutes and it, it, it was the hardest scene in the movie to cut hands down that was the one I struggled with absolutely the most and it was the last piece um, it was finding that level of intimacy was just you know but wow 
Do you feel every filmmaker should also be an editor? Oh. I think it's nice to have different mm -hmm. perspectives on, on it all. I think every filmmaker should make their film. And I'm curious why you used um, the camera as a catalyst for change. I found that very interesting. Is that from being a documentarian? I think, I mean, I, you know, I, just, I guess I have made films on some level about what I know, and, and, and you know, I made two now, and they're, they're, they're both filmmaker films. They're about the filmmaking process on some level, and because that's what I've, it's been my, my, it's my thing, mm -hmm. and I like doing it, and it's, it's taken over my life, and, you know, I mean, the, the first movie is sort of a documentary about the narrative filmmaking process, narrative editing process, and the second movie is a narrative that sort of incorporates a man uh, learning how to use a camera in a documentary sort of a way, so it's, you know, there's elements of that. I was just going to, because we talked to the two lead actresses uh, earlier, and they're talking a lot about how great the rehearsal process was, like getting to know you and how and trying to get your attention and figuring out how to work certain scenes. Could you just elaborate on the whole, like, the rehearsal and the improvisation in general, especially when it came to having the camcorder in the picture? Yeah, there was no improvisation in the sense of dialogue um, in any of the f movie until the end, the credit scene. Um, but then there was like, you know, how are we going to do these scenes, which we kind of worked out. Um, Mark was really collaborative and, and really downloaded everybody about sharing his perspective and then what was your perspective and, you know, your character. And, 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 um, and then, you know, when we got together, we found that we were all so fond of the piece. And so that there was a real kind of, we would almost sometimes talk about it in third person, you know, like, okay, isn't this great where John and, and Violet are coming again? We go, yeah, and I love the way that this, it deals with intimacy and then lies and then the levels. Of, and then we would kind of get into it. And, and, and there was a real camaraderie, you know, with us. I remember, you know, he was, Mark asked me to go out in the street and take some pictures and then, you know, do his project. And then, you know, Adelaide and, and, uh, Boyana and I went out to a bar and took pictures and, that are on the fridge in the movie, uh, in a photo booth and stuff. So there was a lot of life and art kind of coming together, which when you're making a film, that's one of the coolest things, is when you're, you're, our artists are coming together of like mind and, 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 and uh, about the work. And John, uh, Mark really kind of you know, fostered that. Well, when you start to inject hope, optimism, and, and love, uh, inside of a wrapper of dissociation and uh, alienation, you get you get you get a very complicated thing. That's yeah. a, that that ultimately is what makes the film. That's what made I mean, they they did that. I also got the sense of your character, and the same with uh, Sarita Chowdhury, that no. they're both they listen. Like you just you don't kind of assault the world with noise, which I get really felt from the film, you know. And I was wondering, is that a comment? I mean, it's called Generation Um. Is that how it works? I mean, is this what we're becoming? We just talk at each other and no one really listens. And so I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, is that is that how we kind of that's how we redeem the girls? You give them a profile that just to, to you listen to them. You let them kind of tell their story. Is that what we need? Is that kind of the message of the film? Is that I think that's definitely part of me. Uh, yeah. first a Sarita Chowdhury. She is She's great. <laughs> ah, ah. Yeah. yeah. Like the one that yes. was awesome. Yeah. The catch up. The, yeah. yeah. Um, but yes, <laughs> <laughs> quiet moment is standing there. Yes. Yeah, I love that scene. Yeah. Yes. Um, and what's going on behind you is your doing uh -huh. thing, and, and you see the whole relationship. Yeah. And both of them, their energy was. Yeah, it, I mean, the joy of working with actors with Keanu and Sarita in that particular scene is they were so connected, but they were not even looking at each other, mm -hmm. and you get the whole relationship. But yet, yeah, the answer to your question is yes. That is. That is that is definitely a piece of it. It's there's there's a I just you know it, we're just we're becoming immune to anything mm -hmm. to everything and it's it's just you know we nothing is shocking anymore and so we but that's not true yeah it kind of is but it isn't no. all right <laughs> I, would say, I, would, I would say that's not that nothing shocking I'd say that there's a state of shock yeah well that maybe you're you know and I and I think you know these characters right. have are shocked characters in a way. You know, and in, in, in transformation and in trying to change, to reach out, to have a kind of intimacy, to, to have a kind of connection. 
it's an interesting blend of of, of um, perceptions on things. When the different, like when writing a script and portraying a character that's written in a script, and it, it fascinates me the, the the subtle differences in motivation. Uh, also, like whatever my intention in writing it and your intention in playing that character, they are different, and we could we can talk about it. And it's a, it's a really fun conversation. You yeah. Know? But yeah. it it. it, it uh, I, I just like that the dialectic is, is... Yeah, it's solo and communal. It's, yes, it's yes. personal and inherited. It's mm. conflict and sh- collaboration. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's sitting alone in a room and it's being in a room full of people. Yeah. It's... And here we are. Room full of people. I was curious what each of you at the end of this process, looking back, appreciated most or took away most from working with the other. You can even narrow it to um, one thing. Uh, you know, I appreciated um, just, just to, you know, uh, working with, with, with Kiana. I mean, you know, it's my first narrative film, and I, I feel very honored to have been able to make the film I wanted to make without really any restrictions. You know, like we got the we got the let it be organically what it was, and and a big part of that is is Kiana's influence, and and I. I appreciate that because I was allowed to just make the film and without people coming in and going nah, 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 which I've heard stories about that I've just been very lucky and you know working with all of them it's you know just the patience and the on like just the honesty and they, everyone worked really hard and like yeah, and they they walking into a room with a bunch of people that you really respect and having them love your work right there in the room is like nothing, I, I can't even describe it. It's, I mean, wow, you know, it's the script and they, they, they did, they, they put love into it and I was just like, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, it was a good piece of bread. <laughs> <laughs> you made some nice dough, so, you know, you're a good baker. <laughs> and I was just happy to be part of that, part of that recipe. Yeah. You're, my, you're my favorite bag of flour. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I would say that, you know, I would say that, that the opportunities, there are so many pleasures that Mark's story offered me as an actor and also just something to my taste. You know, this, this idea of hope, you know, and uh, for these kind of trapped characters and also um, the way that he was trying to tell the story in a non-traditional way you know not reinventing the wheel but paying homage to a lot of levels cinematically and contextually and, and also you know respect to the audience and for these characters to play and to letting me you know shoot scenes and, and to be creative in that way um, so I would say the opportunity to be creative and you know to, to have the experience of making the film generation of. Last question. Where did the idea for a New York City chase scene come from involving hoo and cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> that question is... Uh, I, you know, I'm not even sure to answer that question. It came out of... It came, it, it came out, of, out of... It, it was originally something different. Um, and something that could not be done. And so, you know, in the end of it, it, it became about how to get the action of the movie from one point to the next movie, it, to the next part of the film. It is the transition. Um, it came from wandering through New York and, and having just odd experiences happen all around me, you know. It, it, it came from um, involving, uh, like, a hundred extras or a hundred, like however many people in a little tiny film, there are certain things just happen and it just sort of grows of its own accord, uh, it, you know, it, 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 it came from wanting to jump a turnstile on the New York City subway, <laughs> you know, it came to wanting to shoot on the subway as a filmmaker, uh, you know, it, it came from, it came from wanting to do something absurd and to tip a hat to French absurdist filmmaking, um, and, uh, and like it, a million other things, it came from that that the parking lot I was shot in is a flea market that I've been passing by for t- fifteen years. It came from wanting to shoot in that parking lot, um, and it came from wanting to 
see John being chased down the street by, you know, a horde of hula hooping cowboys <laughs> and looking at the smile on his face <laughs> <laughs> as he's doing it, you know. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.